There were about 5,000 people in Aden, and I would uh, guess that all 5,000 of them know about the Skylight Inn. You can't live in Aden without knowing about the Skylight Inn. My father made the statement many times when I was young that he put barbecue grease in my milk bottle to make sure that it was in my blood. Sure, that's funny, but I'm sure somewhere deep down, he wanted me to have the same outlook on the place that he did. My name is Samuel Jones, I'm 33 years of age, and I'm the seventh generation in our family to cook whole hog barbecue. Since man figured out what fire was, They've been cooking meat that way. Some people chose to stop. We didn't. <laughs> the old way is just better, which is what we still do. It is for sure not the easiest, because standing in front of that chimney is like being in the vestibule of hell. But the end result, there's no match for. Uh, Skylight Inn is a barbecue restaurant, and it's been here since July of 1947. The first sale that our family did of barbecue was in the 1830s. Descendants of our family served pork out of the back of a covered wagon with a piece of cornbread, it's very similar to what we sell here at Skylight Inn today. There was never a time that barbecue was not part of our family. Anything we did it rotated around this business. When you come to Skylight Inn, you're primarily coming for three things. Whole hog pork, coleslaw, cornbread. Barbecue's a big thing in North Carolina. It, it was synonymous with, with a time of the season, the time of the year. It was a celebratory thing that took place at the end of the growing season. When I was in college, I had an opportunity to write a paper on whatever my choice was. I thought, if I'm gonna write a, a paper and I've got to fill up 10 or 15 pages, why not do it on barbecue? I got plenty of material. It made me realize that there was a heritage there. There was one, something to be proud of, and two, something that you could be another link in the chain in this long line of people that did something great with something small. Are you part of family history or are you part of food history? Hmm, that's a fabulous question. Or both? Without a doubt, I'm a part of family history. Do you like barbecue? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> She loves barbecue. It's truly her part of thing. It's her first meat that she ever ate before the food for the year. Would you be okay if she worked in the barbecue lineage? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure how much choice. It's optional. Here at Skylight, you have two options as to what form you choose to eat our pork. And that is on a bun, with or without coleslaw, or in a tray with a piece of cornbread, and coleslaw on the side. When people pull up in our parking lot, they've already made the decision of what they're gonna be eating for lunch. It's just a matter of how much of it they're gonna have. <laughs> well, I've been coming here for, uh, for about 19 years, and I can tell you that uh, wood cooked barbecue is the best. All the flavors are just, just wonderful. You can, you can taste the wood that's actually in the barbecue. It's really just flavor, and there's no need to even put sauce on it. In the morning, I mean, the bones will pop right out, so you really want to do it while it's tough like this, otherwise, which is uh, disintegration. Yeah, eating at a place of historic legacy obviously, you know, brings a lot back to the community, and we're just excited to have them a part of uh, Eastern North Carolina, more particularly Aiden, North Carolina, uh, and the legacy that they they prevail throughout the community. Whole hog is like the holy grail because it's very easy to mess it up. We cook an average of. 40 hogs a week. Our primary heat source is wood coal, which requires a man that'll go out to the wood pile, put it in a wheelbarrow, bring it in the house, place it in a chimney, 
and as it burns, it produces our own charcoal, which is hot live coals that then have to be shoveled into the pits that provide the heat source by which we cook our hot. So we're in our walk-in cooler. Uh, some people call it our pig room. All we have to do is take the feet and the ears and finish splitting the head on it. You don't have to do these things to aid in the cooking process. We cut the feet off of them simply because our pit is only so wide. Cooking whole animals is not like cooking hamburgers, for instance. You know, it doesn't happen in the blink of an eye. So at this point, as our wood burns and starts to produce the charcoal that we use, we will slowly but surely bring the heat up in this pit, probably to the neighborhood of maybe 325 will be the hottest it'll ever get. From the time our pigs come out of the walk-in, hit the pit, and the first heat is applied to them, you're looking anywhere between 16 and 18 hours from that meat going on to the finished product being chopped and served. In the cookhouse at Skylight Inn, you will not see thermometers on the pits. You will not see a man with a thermo pin. So I can walk out there and place my hand literally, just touch the top of the lid on the pit. I'll know if I, needed to, if I need to stay another hour. You can't expect a man that's done something for 20 years to have to rely on any kind of mechanism to do his trade. There's an art that goes with it. People whom are a lot smarter than I am with food have told me that the way we prep our barbecue enhances the natural flavor of the pork itself. Check is not to over season it. You want to taste the smoke, you want to taste the meat, and all everything in between. Pepper, hot sauce, and some vinegar. The skin of the pig is one thing I think that really separates Skylight Inn from everybody else in barbecue. Most barbecue places skin, pork skin is surely a byproduct of cooking a shoulder or the whole animal. It's not anything that they use for the dish. Where here we direct heat, blister that skin where it's very crispy, crunchy, and it's chopped very finely in the pork to where if you're biting your pork sandwich, with each bite, there's a little crunch in there. We mainly use oak wood. It's created a flavor profile that people associate with Eastern North Carolina barbecue, especially here at Skylight because we hadn't discontinued using wood. We're not putting anything on it that's masking anything and you're not having to get through a sauce to taste the flavor. And if a customer wants to add sauce, we have sauce on the table. There's Texas Pete, which is native to North Carolina, made right out in Winston-Salem. We have our table sauce, or our house sauce that we make, and then a simple pepper vinegar that is basically a spicy vinegar. There's a, a variety of characters that make up the team here at Skylight Inn. James is our, if anybody would be the pit master, it would be James. James worked on the farm with us from my earliest memory, and then he came to work in the restaurant in the early 90s. Uh, the specific year is unknown, because if you ask James, he'll give you a different answer every day. And he's a man of few words. On an average week, we'll use 40 pigs, maybe 45 hogs. You know, so if you just use that average for the last 20 years, it's a ton of pigs. Our guys are a pretty tight-knit group, and so they work well together, and um, I think they're pretty calm, to be honest with you. They're good old Southern boys. Outside of Mike here, Mike's a transplant from Illinois. He's, he's only been here for 12 years, so he's not a vested southerner yet. <laughs> Chopping barbecue at a southern restaurant. Exactly. 
Mike is probably the most dependable person that has ever been a part of this business that was not family. Fortunately for us, he enjoys chopping barbecue. That's the sound we're looking for. That to people who know barbecue means that that skin is crispy. I always sample the meat every all the time just to make sure it's up to par. My standards anyway. Yeah. This is a custom butcher block. So since day one, all the pork that's ever been eaten at Skylight Inn has been hand chopped on a board just like this. I had a customer one time ask my dad, said, did that block used to be flat at one time? And he said, yeah. And he said, well, that means some people's eating a little bit of wood over the years, that and then dad says, well, our wood's better than most people's barbecue. Being the chopper is being quality control of the barbecue going out of here. 95% of all the barbecue that goes out of here, I put out. So you take the pieces of meat of uh, quarters of hog, chop it, season it. And I feel, you know, this. I am working at a you know historic restaurant. I mean, they've been around since 1947. You do my little part in history. It's from chopping barbecue. It's not from lifting weights. That's chopping barbecue. Like I said, I grew up, you know, kind of grew up coming here, but the the space really hasn't changed much over the years. The flavor of that. I don't know if it's the, the grease hitting the coals or, you know, <laughs> or what, but that flavor just cannot be um, Duplicate. duplicated. There's nothing like whole hog, pit cook, wood, barbecue. We all have the different roles of the business that we're good at. Uncle Jeff is more of a back of the house guy. He makes sure that all our meats are right, things are rolling. I've been working here ever since I was a little boy. My dad got me up and I'd follow him around and just enthused about what he was doing and as, as time moved on, I was able to learn uh, certain things, how to cook and all about what went on with the barbecue. It's part of life. I, every day I enjoy coming and each day is a little bit different. I just enjoy passing on what I have learned and having a good product through the year. I feel like if our ancestors were looking down upon us today, that they'd be real proud because I think we've carried the Jones Barbecue Skylight Inn to a higher legacy. What do you think of all these young guys working here? Some of them I think a lot of, some of them I don't. <laughs> Bruce Jones is my father. He is uh, one of the owners here. Bruce is an institution within himself. Uh, anybody who knows Bruce would buy a t-shirt that would say, Bruce, enough said. <laughs> uh, he is a, a people person. He serves food sometimes all day if he don't have anything to do. He's a counter man. He is the worst guy at controlling portions. I will say that. <laughs> we don't have a register up here. Uh, but the reason for that is my dad taught us to make change. Uh, I could count when I was four or five years old, same the same way. Most of your cash registers now tell you how much change to give back when somebody gives you a bill. So we try not to hire a bunch of dummies. We got folks know how to, you know, do calculations in their head. And if you don't trust us, drag you out a piece of paper, we'll show you. <laughs> Growing up, you had to either work on the farm or you had to work in the restaurant. And I hate to say it, basically during the summertime, you wound up doing both and I wanted out. I figured it had to be something life better than this. I'd never have to worry about barbecue business again. But then when I got to college and the gentleman started bringing everything in history back to Eastern North Carolina, and as I shared that with my dad, he started giving me the legacy of the barbecue business and all of a sudden, the barbecue business was no longer a business, but it was a family tradition that I wanted to be very much a part of. Every time I get a chance to talk to the younger generation, I try to like encourage them to hold on to those recipes, those things that their full family did that so it don't be lost in time. 
What I hope for this place, the Skylight Inn, I hope that like it goes on to higher and higher places and reach more people in this new world of the internet. I hope that we can still hold on to the quality of cooking good barbecue over live coals. Right now, barbecue is trendy. Barbecue is cool. You know, there was a time when barbecue wasn't cool. It was in the armpit of the culinary world. The price of pork affects everybody in the restaurant business because the price of pork will eventually affect the price of beef and the price of poultry. But for us, it's a direct impact because that is all we sell. You know, if you ask the question, do you want your child to follow in your footsteps? Some of my footsteps, yes. Some of my footsteps, I hope she jumps over them like a hurdle. If she so chooses to be in the barbecue business, I hope it's on a different level. You know, that maybe by the time she's my age, I will have gotten fortunate enough that I've grown this company into other locations. You know, I never want to lose sight of why we are Skylight Inn. If Skylight Inn winds up being a brand that you see in other places, you know, besides Aiden, North Carolina, I want it to always be known that that is what's going on in the back of the building. And your favorite memory of Skylight Inn? My favorite memory of Skylight Inn. Closing time. <laughs>